It's Wednesday. You know what that means. Time for the Southern California Writers Association Hump Day Book Tour. I'm your host, Maddie Margarita, here with Diana Pardee on Tech. Every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m., the Southern California Writers Association invites a new and different writer to talk a little bit about their books and their work. This morning, we are pleased and honored to have with us Dennis Palumbo. Um, Dennis's mystery thrillers um, include Mirror Image, Fear Dream, uh, Fever Dream, Night Tremors, Phantom Limb, Head Wounds, and his latest Panic Attack. Uh, all his novels are, in that series feature psychologist and trauma expert Daniel Rinaldi. A writer and licensed psychotherapist in private practice, Dennis is formerly a Hollywood screenwriter. His credits include the feature film My Favorite Year, for which he was nominated for a WGA award for best screenplay. He was also a staff writer for the ABC TV series, Welcome Back Cotter, and has written numerous series episodes and pilots. His articles and short fiction have appeared in Ellery Queen's Mystery Magazine, The Strand, and numerous other pu publications. Dennis's uh, work helping writers has been profiled in the New York Times, Premier Magazine, Fade In, Angelino, GQ, Oh my gosh, do we miss anybody? Um, the LA Times and other publications, as well as on NPR and CNN. He has also appeared numerous times on Between the Lines, the PBS author interview show. Good morning, Dennis. Good morning, Maddie. Thank you for having me. Well, like I said, we're honored to have you. I, I know you have a um, storied writing career, um, as well as a professional um, practice, therapy practice. Um, yes. Do you want to... Uh, where, where would you like to start? You can be on our couch today. Where would you like to start? <laughs> uh, well, I'd just like to say uh, after 17 years as a Hollywood television and film writer, I changed careers, retired from show business, and uh, went back to school. And six years later, got my license. And I've been a licensed psychotherapist in private practice for the past 30 years. Um, this also allows me my favorite hobby. I, unlike a lot of psychologists, I don't play golf. Instead, I write mystery thrillers. And the new one, Panic Attack, is, I think, one of the best books in the series. I'm very pleased about it. And so far, it's been getting some very nice reviews. So I'm very gratified by that. Well, I saw that um, review that you posted, that five-star review, which was excellent. So uh, yes, I corroborate that. Um, so it's so interesting that uh, you started as in the writing um, area arena and then went into psychotherapy. Um, it's too, probably too bad you couldn't have done that at the same time because yeah. you probably could have used your services. Um, well, well, one of the things that I think benefits my patients who are primarily in the entertainment industry is because I'm retired, uh, I'm not in competition with them. I'm over here as a clinician and they're over there as the creative artist. And then I switch hats in the evening and become the creative artist I used to be and work on my Daniel Rinaldi novels. Oh, well, talk a little bit about, um, this is a wonderful series. Talk a little bit about Daniel Rinaldi as a character um, and where well, he came from. And... Well, yeah, he, he is, I've always wanted to write a series with uh, a lead. Uh, ever since when I was a kid and uh, my dad brought me the adventures of Sherlock Holmes when I was 10 years old and had the mumps and I was hooked and I thought I'm going to create someone like this. Well, flash forward 50 years and uh, after many years as a psychologist in private practice, I thought, what about a psychologist in the lead? And at the same time, I had been working for five or six years with Robert Stollero the nation's leading expert on trauma. And so I decided to make my psychologist a trauma expert who treats victims of violent crime. And so he consults with the Pittsburgh police dealing with people who may have survived, let's say a carjacking or an armed robbery or a home invasion, but they're traumatized by that experience. Uh, as Stolero said, we live in the age of trauma right now. And so my lead character, he himself is a trauma victim. He and his wife years ago were coming out of a restaurant, got mugged, it went sideways. His wife got shot and killed. Daniel was shot, but he survived. And so he struggles with his own survivor guilt. 
which is one of the things that motivates him to help victims of violent crime. He's trying to work out his own survivor, survival, and to have it have some meaning. As he said, it was unearned luck to survive. I've been trying to earn it ever since. And that's the character that goes through these six novels. In the new one, Panic Attack, it's, it's kind of interesting. It's a little different than some of the other books. And it's about a sniper who seems to be shooting people at random from the tops of buildings. And one of Daniel's patients is a survivor of one of those attempts who is having panic attacks. So I, I've dealt with so many patients who have panic attacks that readers will learn a lot. There's a takeaway in this novel because as Daniel treats his patient, the reader learns how to deal with a panic attack and what happens when you do. And then the more shootings there are that seem to be inexplicable to the police, the city itself kind of goes into panic. People are afraid to go out the, outside and do things. So it's a kind of an explosion of using the idea of panic. And paradoxically, while I was writing this, during the COVID pandemic that first year, the symptoms and interpretation and diagnosis of panic attacks has gone through the roof for most people. And many people to this day, as these variants keep hitting, are, are suffering PTSD symptoms. And, and uh, it's, it's not only just anxiety and depression, but it's panic. And panic symptoms are very different than just anxiety. You get these heart palpitations. Most people experiencing a panic attack think they're having a heart attack. That's how frightening it can be. And so this book deals with panic attacks and then does an interesting thing for me that I think makes it very interesting is the police capture the sniper about two thirds of the way through the book. And we learn nothing we thought that was true about the sniper is actually true. As I like to say it, once he's captured, the real mystery begins. I, I love it. I'm proud of that turn. I'm very proud of that turn in the book. It, was that some, when you were writing the book, was that something you knew all along or was that something that turn, that pivot, did that come to you during the writing process? Well, I am a pantser. Uh, there are two types of crime writers. There's those that outline very specifically and know exactly what's going to happen throughout the whole book. And then there are what are called pantsers based on seat of the pants. That's me. I write the first sentence of every novel as a challenge. I have no idea what the second sentence is going to be or where the book's going to go, who's going to be killed, and who the killer is. And the idea of this turn, once I captured the sniper, came to me. And I thought, what if all of these sniper attacks were not random? And then I came up with why they weren't. And it was so exciting for me. I feel like if I'm surprised, the reader will probably be surprised. So um, uh, I, that one just came out of the blue. But it, it, you know, it's um, strange. It feels like Panic Attack has a different um, feel um, to it from some of your previous um, Daniel in all the novels. Um, I don't know whether it's a scale or scope or I'm not sure what it is. Do you? Yeah, I think it's the scale because previous novels, you know, they're thrillers. I, I, I pride myself on, on uh, well-rounded characters. And each of the books usually deals with some sort of psychological condition. And for example, Night Terrors, which is about the growing diagnosis of what used to be a pediatric diagnosis is more and more adults are now presenting with night terrors or phantom limb, which is about a one-legged man who feels he still has uh, a, a leg there. And I use it as a metaphor for those who've lost loved ones and feel their presence still. Like when my grandfather died for weeks and weeks afterwards, I kept wanting to pick up the phone and call him. And it was like a phantom limb. I still felt his presence being here. And so I like to use 
a diagnostic category as sort of a hook and then see the metaphor that's involved with it. I think what makes Panic Attack different is not only, I think, as each book does, it deepens the relationship Daniel has with others, but it's also the book that comes after Head Wounds, which most readers find the most frightening book they ever read with the most harrowing ending, as Joseph Finger said. And Tom Perry, one of my favorite writers, an Edgar Award-winning mystery writer, thought that the villain was the scariest villain he's read since Hannibal Lecter. So I was very, very pleased with what he said about head wounds. And so our hero, Daniel Rinaldi, goes through such horrible experiences in head wounds that Panic Attack is about him trying to get over what happened to him. At the same time, he's dealing uh, uh, not only with the sniper and his own patient, but his friends and colleagues who were so affected by what happened in head wounds that they're still recovering too. So it has a nice broad quality to it that, that I kind of like. And of course, again, Pittsburgh itself is a character in the book. Uh, so it was interesting you said that um, uh, it deepens Daniel's relationships in this, but as you as you were writing this series, obviously your relationship with Daniel has changed. Um, so when you wrote your the first book, had you did you intend this to be a series, and did you have any thought about what his character arc would be as it uh, progressed through the series? Actually, I did. When I wrote the first book, it was in, in the hopes of it being the first of a series. And since the beginning of the book happens a couple out, uh, years after the death of his wife, I wanted him to have the survivor guilt. And I also foresaw, as happens in all the succeeding books, his difficulty in allowing himself to have romantic relationships because of his guilt and his love for his former wife in fact, there's a scene in Panic Attack where he's, he's been dating this FBI agent for a while. And the next morning, he comes in and sees her in the, his kitchen making breakfast or dinner or whatever. And he says to himself, she seems so comfortable in my kitchen, which makes me very uncomfortable. His, yeah. his approach avoidance in relationship is one of the things that I think make the characters deep uh, and, and gives the book, uh, I, I don't, you know, not to sound hubristic, a little bit of a literary quality. I, I'm really interested in the writing being vivid and powerful and true to the human condition. So because you put so much into these books, how, how do you want somebody to feel when they finish reading a book that you've written? I want them to feel, number one, they were really entertained and surprised by a lot of what happens in the books. Number two, I want them to feel real kinship with my narrator, Daniel Rinaldi, with our lead character, to love him, to be interested and intrigued by all the people in his life whose, whose lives go on too in all the six books. I mean, they change, they grow, people get married, people get divorced. I mean, it's real life and the books move along in time. They're not static you know, Daniel's getting older. And it, at the end, I want them to feel that they know what Pittsburgh is like, uh, what it's like to be in an urban environment that is changing from an old world kind of blue collar world to a very gentrified white collar world. And my hero, Daniel, has a foot in both worlds. His family is blue collar. He was the first to go to college to wear a suit and tie. Frankly, it's my story. My dad was a grocer. Daniel's dad was a beat cop. I was the first of nine grandchildren to go to college. I mean, it, I, I follow a lot. A lot of what happens to Daniel is based on my own biography, except that uh, I was not a former amateur boxer like Daniel <laughs> is. And I'm not as brave and resourceful. Most of the things he gets involved in would have me running for the hills. But you are as resourceful because you come up with all of his actions and reactions. That's so true. that's there. We're gonna we're gonna do that. So what is what um what is his future? What is the series future? What are you working on now? 
Well, I'm thinking about the next book. Uh, uh, over the years as a, a therapist, I've gone to many uh, uh, professional conferences. Uh, and I'm thinking I might do a book. The next one might be about a hotel in Pittsburgh that's hosting a therapist conference. Um, because first of all, they're hilarious because there's so much backbiting in politics. I mean, you know, if you <laughs> if you saw a room full of therapists in a, in, 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 in a conference hall, uh, you'd just see a bunch of really neurotic, bitter, competitive, jealous, envious people. I mean, the way conferences work is a psychologist gets up, he reads a paper about a topic, then he gets down, the next speaker gets up and reads a paper about how the former speaker was full of crap. So that's what conferences are like. <laughs> what would happen if somebody held the hotel hostage or someone began killing the therapist? I'm not quite sure I'm gonna do it yet, but Daniel is gonna be an attendee and a speaker at this conference. And there's gonna be kind of a lockdown where you can't leave it. And so it has a kind of, uh, sequestered lockdown feeling with something bad happening in the hotel. That's about as far as I've gotten. Well, well you know, I guess um, a lot more of us can relate to feeling locked down than before. Uh, yeah. you know, so that's there exactly you go. right. That's there you exactly go. right. Because that's where it came from. I thought, well, you know, at least when I go to conferences, I can walk across the street and get a burger. What if you couldn't leave? And yeah. that that was kind of how I was feeling during the pandemic. Right. Still do in some respects. Yeah. Well, I've, I've felt that way at writers' conferences too. So it's not, oh, it's yeah. not just therapists. Yeah, um, yeah. What I've would been be to a lot of those. I've been to a lot of those too. Would be the writers and the therapists together locked in the hotel. Oh, locked but that's another hotel. book. That's, ah, the, that's book the book after that. That's the book after that. <laughs> well, well, we're excited uh, about Panic, panic Attack. Uh, I hope that everybody watching will. Uh, We'll go out and buy it and enjoy yeah, it. Here's the cover. Shame which is a great cover. Yeah. Let's see. Shamelessly plugging the book. Let's hold that up a little bit more. A little bit more. There we go. Very nice. Very yeah, nice. A wonderful job with the cover, right? Yeah. And, you know, if you can't um, afford to buy the book, we certainly understand. But there's that um, amazing place where they let you uh, borrow books for free called the library. So if you can go and read it, please leave a review uh, because reviews are important to writers as well. Um, that's another way of supporting them. So uh, we wish you the best of luck, Dennis, on Panic Attack. Uh, looking, forward so to, looking forward to see how you progress from here. Please um, stay in touch. And, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And um, thank you and Diane for having me. Uh, this has been fun. Yeah, well, that's good. We'll have to talk about that from a therapeutic standpoint later. Uh, okay. All right, all right, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you on behalf of Dennis and Diana, and we will see you soon.